Namaste, soul siblings. Super happy morning, glorious day. This is Vic, and we are ready for our BAM yoga, breathing, asana, and meditation practice. Beautiful. We start with our first practice of the day called life appreciation. This is a breathing practice, and we use more of the capacity of our lungs than we are used to in our day to day. We know already that when we breathe, we give very little attention to this vital process, but in this practice, we give it full attention. So begin exhaling. You can breathe through your nose or your mouth. And then take a rich inhale slowly, filling up your lungs. and begin to engage with the energy of appreciation, of gratitude, of delight, and begin to look around. Perhaps you have a window nearby, if you are indoors or if you are outdoors, beautiful. You can just see and begin to connect with the nature all around you. Nature displays or represents to us all God-made things. So as we breathe in richly and out generously, we use our eyes and our open heart to connect with the different forms of life, with the different forms that the Creator has taken to make the whole of this plane, of this planet. Thank you, thank you, thank you for life being so magnificent. So many forms of life being displayed and make this life so rich. Just by looking around we can engage in celebration mode because there's nothing we have to do to experience magnificence in life. It is given. We are ourselves magnificent without having to do or accomplish anything. And to do that recognition in one's lifetime is a great gift to oneself. Thank you, thank you, thank you, life, for the whole of life. Thank you, life, for making me, for making each one of us conscious beings, beings of awareness, presence, consciousness, able to realize how magnificent we are and how magnificent life is. Life is not only magnificent, it is precious and we open ourselves to realize, accept and appreciate all of these beautiful gifts that we are given. Second, li second level of life appreciation, begin to look around you and now connect with the things that are man-made and that you have chosen to bring into your life. All the furniture around you, your clothes, your food, electricity, water, your connections, your job, your relatives. Although people are God-made things, we also participate in that creation, but mainly we choose what people do we bring into our environment. So we appreciate our relations, our connections, our choices, basically and everything that we have chosen to bring into our experience. There is so much abundance available in life and we are enjoying it. We are part of it. And we feel abundant as we recognize the abundance all around us. Hermanito, bendiciones. Life appreciation practice. Thank you, life, for the whole of life. Thank you, life, for my life. 
rich inhales, generous exhales, we use more of our lung capacity than we are used to. And now we engage on the third level of life appreciation. This is to appreciate the life that we are. Please take a moment and appreciate each one of your organs, each one of your systems, each one of the molecules, cells and atoms in your body. Approximately 30 trillion cells make up your whole physical body. There's a whole bunch of cells in there and they represent like small soldiers, all of them listening to your command. So be aware of your inner talk. What are you telling yourself? What are you talking to? What are you talking about to yourselves, to your insights? They create those comments that you make about the world and yourself make up your inner environment. So make sure to give instructions to your cells that are health, health sustaining and that amplify your experiences in life. Beautiful. Let's move on to the second section of the practice. This one is called focus breathing. So we make a little change from the previous practice where we were using more of our lung capacity. Now for this practice, we use our full capacity of the lungs when we inhale and when we exhale. So that means that when you exhale, exhale blowing all the air out of the lungs and then when you inhale, bring in air so to fill up your lungs to the top, all the way to your clavicles. For this technique, we breathe through the nose and we close the eyes, we, co we close the lips, we open the heart and we begin exhaling. Blow, blow, blow all the air out and then softly let your exhale become inhale. <clears throat> Fill up your lungs to the top and then let your inhale become exhale and softly blow out all the air from your lungs. All your focus, attention, presence and intention go to the flow of your breath. And please notice that you're not breathing creating a nasal sound, but instead the sound comes from the back of your throat. So it is not like this, but instead it goes like this. For this technique, we remember that there is a membrane in the throat that is called the epiglottis. So we can regulate the openness of that membrane and we open it only halfway. As we open it halfway, the air coming in and out creates that sound. When you open it up too much, then the sound is not made. When you close it too much, the throat begins to itch and it is uncomfortable to keep breathing. So you have to find the point midway that doesn't itch and that there is not too open that allows the sound to be produced and create a sound that is soft, soothing, sweet, and let your mind follow it. Remember to breathe using the full capacity of your lungs. Break the automatic, breathe consciously. Stay present. I must remind you, if you are just connecting to the practice and you don't have the full time to practice the full hour, just take a few moments, engage for the time that you have available. For this 
practice of um, focused breathing, for instance, just a few moments can create a big difference in your insights. But don't take my, my word for it. Try it yourself, explore yourself, and find out your own truths. And once you find them, use them to create sweet and fruitful change in your life. As you slow the pace of your breath, there is a sensation of anxiety rising up inside, telling you to rush and to hurry. But choose to breathe slowly and create perfect comfort inside by moving more slow in your life. Many people like to have more peace, but they cannot stop to rush, to worry, to stress. How can peace achieve? How can peace be achieved in that approach of life. So we find perfect comfort in living, moving, doing, being more peaceful in the things that we do, in how we engage with our life. The mind tends to wander off to the past or the future, keep it present, use the sound of your breath and engage with your creative aspect to create a flow for your breath that feels expansive, nurturing, illumining. Relax your body open your heart, step out of your head and plunge into your heart. Thank you, life, so much for the gift of choice. I chose to breathe more slow, and now I can immediately feel the changes already. How beautiful to experience ourselves as creators, conscious creators of our lives. Hello, hello, Monch, <laughs> Nikki. Thank you so much for joining. Let's move on now to the third section of the practice. Do we are still on the breathing part, but now <coughs> we add movement. So continue to breathe using the full capacity of your lungs. We are going to add movement and this movement, usually when we move in our lives, we prioritize the movement and we put the breath secondary. But breathing is what keeps us in peace and um, integrated and in harmony with life. So in this practice, we prioritize the breath, we have the body follow, and we breathe using the full capacity of the lungs. Also, one important ingredient in this part of the practice, as you're moving your body, moving celebration to be able to move each one of your limbs, to move your entire self from one place to another, from one situation to another. This is great power in our lives, so let's engage it. Let's start now with the palms together in front of the heart. Exhale, blowing the air out. Remember you're breathing through your nose. And as you begin to inhale, bring the arms up. Reach up high, lengthen the arms and the spine. And as you begin to exhale, bring the arms down. 
Don't just bring the arms down like this. Stretch out, open your heart, expand it. Inhale, arms up. Break the automatic in your life. Don't just move, but indeed appreciate the ability of your body to be mobile. Appreciate the ability you have to move from one place to the other, from one situation to a different one. Inhale, reach all the way up, lengthen the spine. Exhaling, open your heart. Breathe using the full capacity of your lungs. Reach up high and with your next exhale, lean to the side. One hand down, the other arm up. Twist, look up, stretch. Inhale, come up. Reach up high. Exhaling, lean to the other side. Stretch, make it feel good for you. Inhaling, come up. Next exhale, lean forward. Aim to keep your spine straight. Go as deep as your body allows you to release tension from your hips. Inhale, come up. Exhale, lean to the side. Simple movements, deep breathing. We stay present. We embrace our ability to move. We celebrate the mobility of each of our limbs and we bless ourselves with deep breaths. Inhale up. One more round, exhale side. Inhale. Exhale. Moving your body keeps your body young and strong and nimble. So move your body in celebration mode. Inhale, come up. With your next exhale, bring the arms down. Place your hands behind your back. Fingers point forward. Feet in front of you, knees bent. Next inhale, bring your hips up, tilt your head back. Open your heart. Let the burden trap between your shoulders to fall away. Exhale, slowly come down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale. How good it feels in your withins to stretch, to move every part of the body lovingly. Inhale up, open the heart. Exhale, come down. Turn over to your knees and hands. Your hands are shoulder width apart, your knees are hip width. Index fingers point forward, palms wide open. Inhale, arch your back, look towards your belly button. Exhaling, belly button down, look forward and up. Inhale. Stimulate the spine. This has tremendous benefits for, your oral, for all your organs and systems. For the working of the brain and for the connection with the soul. Inhale. Exhale. It feels awesome to do these simple movements, awakening the whole body keeping it young, strong, full of life. Bring your spine now to neutral and shift your left hand to the center of your mat. With the next inhale, right arm up, reach up high, lengthen. The arms open the heart. Exhale, hand down. Switch, left arm up, inhaling, twist. Move with your breath. Breathe using your full lung capacity. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. One more round, inhale, reach up high, heart open. Smiling in joy. Other side to keep it even, twist, exhale, both hands in front of you, 
shift your hips back bring your forehead down ribs rest between no um yeah the ribs rest between the thighs sway softly left and right releasing tension from your hips slowly come to your knees and hands stuff the toes into the mat bring your hips up in the air downward facing dog bend one knee and the other twisting the hips next inhale look forward feet between the hands exhaling the head down keep your legs straight inhale come up arms up exhale arms down awesome breathing section of our practice is complete now we move on to the second section is called asanas this what this is why this is called bam yoga breathing asanas and meditation about 20 minutes do we spend on each part so now we go for 20 minutes about 20 minutes of asanas so we start with a sun salutation and here also be present enough so that the main focus is your breath and you have the body follow with the movements okay beautiful feet together arms down next inhale bring the arms up look up reach up high lengthen from heels to fingertips exhaling fall forward reach for your toes or your mat keep the legs straight inhale look up exhaling hands down feet back bottom of the push-up bend the elbows come down keep your elbows close to the ribs inhale lift your heart cobra exhale hips up in the air downward facing dog bend one knee and the other we'll be here for five breaths if you like to take a break please go to child's pose either way whether you are in child's pose or downward dog your breath remains the same you're using the full capacity of your lungs relax your jaw relax your neck and with your next inhale look forward feet between hands exhale head down legs straight inhale come up exhale arms down by your sides beautiful one more time sun salutation a inhale exhale fall forward reach for your toes or your mat legs straight go deeper than before inhale look up exhale hands down feet back bottom of the push-up chaturanga dandasana in sanskrit inhale up cobra exhale downward dog five breaths in downward dog keep present breathing using the full capacity of your lungs bend one knee and the other keep the posture active so you're pressing your heels towards your mat feeling a pull on your hamstrings and your heart towards your toes releasing tension from the upper back next inhale look forward feet between hands exhale head down legs straight go deeper inhale come up exhale arms down beautiful sun salutation b bend your knees inhale arms up exhaling lean forward legs straight reach for your toes or your mat inhale look up exhaling hands down feet back bottom of the push-up go right inhaling move with your breath breathe using the full capacity of your lungs regulate the pace at which you breathe now we are in downward facing dog next inhale left foot forward arms up warrior one exhaling hands down foot back bottom of the push-up elbows close to the ribs inhale up cobra exhale downward dog inhale right foot forward arms up warrior one other side 
exhaling, hands down, foot back, bottom of the push-up, cobra, downward dog for five breaths, remember, if your body is asking you for a break, go to child's pose, and keep breathing using the full capacity of your lungs. Gently shake your head, no. Yes. Release tension from your neck. Open the mouth wide. Stimulating the muscles and tissue on your face. Next inhale, look forward, feet between hands. Exhale, head down, legs straight. Bend your knees, come up inhaling to chair pose and exhaling, arms down, legs straight. <coughs> awesome, one more time, sun salutation B. Bend the knees, arms up inhaling, exhaling, legs straight, reach down for your toes or your mat. Inhale, look up, exhale, hands down, feet back. Chaturanga, Cobra, Downward Facing Dog, Next Inhale, Left Foot Forward, Warrior One, Exhaling, Warrior Two, Inhale, Reverse Warrior, Exhaling, windmill your arms in front of you. Foot back, bottom of the push-up. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Next inhale, right foot forward, arms up, warrior one. Exhaling, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, Chataranga Dandasana. One exhale all the way down. Cobra. Downward facing dog for five breaths. The greatest benefit of this posture is that we are keeping the head below the heart. This position may be awkward for many, so don't allow yourself to get bored or frustrated. Keep it active, keep expanding, and keep using the full capacity of your lungs as you breathe. Next inhale, look forward, feet between the hands. Exhale, head down, legs straight. Go as deep as your body allows you to. Bend the knees. Inhaling, come up to chair pose and exhaling, Tadasana, legs straight, arms down. Awesome. Now we go for wrist therapy. So come to your knees and hands, fingers pointing forward and one hand at a time we are going to rotate pointing the fingers back, back. If you are in your office right now, for instance, you don't have to get a mat on the floor or anything, you can just get to the edge of your desk and do this practice. This is very helpful for carpal tunnel syndrome, for instance. So, one hand at a time, we point the fingers back, back, forward, forward, back, back, forward, forward, back, back. Forward, forward, back, back. Forward, forward, back, back. Keep the back, back part now and lean back. Keeping the palms flat on the mat, stimulate your wrists and forearms using your own body weight, leaning back. It feels so good, use your breath, stay present. Now, Turn your palms facing up, middle fingers pointing each other, your body weight still back, and begin to move forward, bringing your shoulders over wrists. If it 
is too much weight on your wrists, go back slightly. And as you exhale, make fists. It feels awesome, right? Beautiful. Sit on your heels and shake. Shake your wrist in that direction, then like that. Circles, also in both directions. Press the fingertips together, creating some resistance. Exhaling, inhaling, out. Exhaling, press. This helps with circulation to your fingers, both of blood and energy. In this BAM yoga practice, we integrate the energetic and spiritual aspects of ourselves into our lives consciously. So yes, indeed, we are working with energy and spirit. Fingers wide open, inhaling, exhaling, press. Close, make fists, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Beautiful. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Blessings, my brother Francisco. I hope to see you soon. Now, boat pose. Core strengthening. Sit with your knees bent, pointing up, feet together. Roll the shoulders back, the spine is straight, lift your heart just a bit and lean back, bringing your feet off the ground. Arms by your sides, palms face up. Look slightly up and breathe through your nose, repeating in your insides or out loud if you like. This small but very powerful mantra conviction determination consistency conviction determination consistency conviction determination consistency keep breathing through your nose using the full capacity of your lungs you are using this time this practice this particular posture to develop conviction determination consistency take your mind to be focused on those energies that you are developing inside of you and forget about the weight of your legs the tightness in your belly the core strength being activated go past that and focus on the mantra transcend matter transcend the physical aspect of yourself Breathe using the full capacity of your lungs. And when you feel ready with the next inhale, extend the legs, lift your feet up. Conviction, determination, consistency. Conviction, determination, consistency. Even if your legs shake, keep it up. Conviction, determination, consistency. Two more. Conviction, determination, consistency one more you can do this conviction yes you can do this keep breathing determination and consistency beautiful bring your feet down shake your legs awesome now we move to shoulder stand for shoulder stand please lay on your back Ladies, if you are in your moon cycle, please do not do shoulder stand today. Instead, there is a variation, an option. And this is it. The name is Viparita Karani. Legs up in the air. You can choose to rest them against the wall or hold them up in the air like I am right now. And take about 15 breaths here. For shoulder stand, we are going to also lay on the back but bring not only the legs up in the air but the entire body so we are going to be resting the 
way of the body on the area of the neck so in order to keep your neck safe please do not turn your head to the sides so legs up in the air hips up in the air torso off the ground look up to your toes and breathe using the full capacity of your lungs if your body is not up straight don't get frustrated don't get angry at yourself don't think that you cannot do this or that this is not for you but instead choose to consciously and lovingly take yourself from where you are right now to where you want to be this is conscious use of your godly power and use this practice come every morning practice with me and you will soon achieve your goal next exhale slowly lower your feet overhead keep the legs extended arms extend behind your back and optional you can interlace your fingers Your toes are reaching away from your head and with every exhale you release, you relax more and you go deeper into the pose. With your next exhale slowly release and roll out of the posture one vertebrae at the time on your mat next will be fish so legs extended feet together toes point away from your head elbows down palms face down lift the heart tilt the head back slide your elbows towards your feet until the crown of your head rests on the mat continue to lift the heart Option one stays there. Be aware that the weight of your body is not resting on your neck. In fact, the action of lifting the heart removes the weight of your neck. Option two, arms and legs off the ground. Still the action of lifting the heart removes the weight of the neck. Breathe using the full capacity of your lungs. Exhaling, gently release, careful with the neck, curl the knees into the heart and sway softly left and right, massaging your back, making it feel good. This practice is so sweet, you are awesome and we are feeling good. Roll over the side of your body, come up to seated for a moment and Let's take a brief moment to give thanks. Appreciation is a big part of this practice. It's a big part of my life. And if you like, you can also make it a big part of yours for appreciation activates abundance in our personal, individual life. Beautiful. So in this moment, we appreciate and we give thanks to all the masters, sages and teachers that came before us and left the legacy of the science and practice of yoga for us to do today. So if you like, please repeat with me. Parama Rishipyo Namaha Parama Rishipyo Namaha Acharya Devo Baba Acharya, Devo, Baba. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this wonderful legacy. Next will be Shavasana, world favorite. Out of more or less 800,000 yoga postures, this is the most advanced. So do your best. 
Lay on your back, separate the feet to the width of the mat, arms by your sides, palms face up. Close the eyes, open the heart. Let's take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhaling through the mouth, opening wide, sticking the tongue out and rolling the eyeballs in all directions. Sigh and melt on your mat. Do it a few times. Now come back to your usual breathing pattern. Breathe regularly as you do usually. During our days, we are used to moving, doing, thinking, feeling, and that's how we mainly engage with life. During our nights, we bring the moving and the doing to rest, the thinking and the feeling also. And just as we let them rest, we fall asleep. We are not necessarily used to remaining awake and aware, even when the body, the mind and the emotions are resting. So during this time of Shavasana, aim to stay awake and aware. Be the watcher of your body resting on your mat. If any sensations appear, aim to watch them instead of reacting to them. Same you can do with thoughts and with emotions and feelings. Whatever comes up, choose to watch it instead of reacting to it. Two things will happen when you do this. First, you will realize that just as whatever come, came up did out of nowhere, when you only allow yourself to watch it, you will see it dissolve also into nothingness. From nothing it comes and to nothingness it goes. When we hold on to whatever comes up and start thinking and creating feelings about it, we sustain that. And many times we do that with things that we don't want. What's the use? What's the purpose? Live consciously. The second thing that you may notice as you identify with the observer within, is that usually we are accustomed to labeling and judging everything that comes up to our awareness. But God is present in everything, everywhere. So instead of you labeling and judging whatever you see or comes to your awareness, allow yourself to simply see it, watch it, observe it, and let it instead speak to you. Remember, the presence of the Divine is in everything, everywhere. So whatever comes to your presence is God embodied in a different form. Let it speak to you, let it guide you. Let it reveal truth to you. As you feel ready now, begin to wiggle your fingers, your toes, your ankles, your wrists your elbows and your knees. Curl the knees into the heart. Sway gently left and right. And when you feel ready, roll over the one side, help yourself up to seat it. For we enter to the last section of our practice, meditation. 
Beautiful. Manito. <laughs> I'm so happy you're enjoying. Evie. Beautiful that you guys are joining the practice. Come to sit it now. Sit on your mat, your chair, your bed, your couch. You can also stand up for this meditation section. I do not advise to lay down because it's easy to fall asleep. Close the eyes, seal your lips, lips open your heart, breathe through your nose. And if you like, you can engage your Ujjayi breath one more time. Slowing down the pace of the breath helps very much when we are sitting for meditation. It helps clear the mind and open the heart. This facilitates soul connection. We close the eyes because when the eyes wander, the mind also wanders. We are trying to make, or we are aiming to make, our mind more quiet at the moment. Maybe when you sit for meditation, you notice that your mind becomes more active. Don't fight it, and don't get frustrated about it. While, you, while your mind develops the silence that you're seeking, choose to observe it. And you will be observing it from the soul. The mind does not watch itself. So identify with the watcher within. The one that emits opinion and judgment that stamps a label on whatever it sees is the ego or the mind. For this time, for the time of this practice, choose to identify with the soul instead of the ego. We have plenty of ego identification throughout the day. So we take this time to make soul connection and activate the divine presence in our daily doings. As you keep your eyes closed, identify your five bodies. The physical is the one you're sitting with. The mental is the one you think with. The emotional, the one that you feel with. And for now, just become aware that doing, moving, thinking and feeling are all different things. So you need a different body to experience each one of those dimensions. Then we have the, spirit, the energetic body the aura and the spiritual body, the soul. Usually we don't engage them consciously in our lives. But today we are choosing to acknowledge them, to accept their presence in our lives and to give it a presence, an active presence in our doings today. When a situation comes and I'm going to react quickly, instinctively, I can make a pause and I can make a choice to respond instead of reacting. After that choice, I can also choose where to respond from from the physical aspect, from the mental aspect, from the emotional aspect, from the energetic aspect, or from the spiritual aspect of myself. Each one of the five bodies has a different opinion of what you are interacting with. 
Sometimes they all have the same opinion about the one thing and therefore we experience harmony inside. There is no conflict. But when the physical has one opinion, the mental another, the emotional another, the energetic another and the soul another, we are very much scattered. We feel lost, we don't know what to do, we don't know how to make up our minds and make our decisions and we take actions that many times are in misalignment with the goals that we want to achieve, the directions that we want to walk towards. So instead of reacting instinctively, respond consciously. Take a moment to see which of your five bodies is emitting opinion and then choose which opinion do you want to bring forth into the world. If you find misalignment, disharmony between the five bodies about one situation or thing that is going on in your life, with responsibility, accountability, presence and joy, choose which one you want to give the voice to. If you cannot choose, bring harmony to the five bodies. Use your ability to discern what opinions of those bodies are not important or are irrelevant to you. with regards to the goal or the direction you want to go towards. And let them fall off if they are not aligned with your goals and directions. Use discernment. And ask your soul, soul of mine, I choose to transcend my mind to hear your voice speak to me clearly in ways in which I could understand and take action upon. Show me the path clearly that is more aligned with my goals, with my intentions, with my directions. Take me there sweetly, softly, smoothly, joyously. Disengage from fear, disengage from past experience, which is limiting. Disengage from the opinion of others. Connect with your soul and let it guide you. Following your past, you repeat your life. Following another, you are living on reference. Develop the strength to follow your heart. Develop the commitment with yourself to teach yourself to distinguish the voice of your soul from the voice of your ego mind. They have different interests in this life and they will take you in very different directions and give you many different experiences. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, it is all life. But if you're suffering, struggling, hating life, sometimes that happens. Some people even want to kill themselves. If you are in such positions, use this guidance, it will help you to see the light to feel more comfortable with your life and to make your choices from a different place. Liberate yourself mainly from the shackles of fear. Fear is the greatest limitation to man because it extends, it shows itself in so many different ways. Fear is not only being afraid of something, Fear shows up and it masquerades in different forms of expression and experience. 
fear is dark energy because it turns off the light. It dwindles the light in us. So whenever you, through your own awareness, distinguish the presence of fear in your life, you can consciously choose to transmute that energy soon. Not because it is bad, simply because you want different. Unless you find perfect comfort and delight in aligning with fear, then transmute it. Otherwise, why holding on to it? It limits our lives. in dramatic ways, literally. Align instead with your divinity. Fear comes as we forget who we are. If we knew ourselves as divine beings, godly beings embodied in human form, we would not align with fear. We would not surrender to its bullshit because that's what it is. Illusion of what you are not. Fear is the instrument that allows you to experience what you are not in life. So choose to transmute that energy from your system soon when you see it pop up. Fear is a choice as faith is a choice. When fear pops up, choose faith. Speak to the soul instead of the ego being afraid. The soul knows not fear. It knows love, the opposite of fear. In this world of duality, we find pairs of opposites and to the presence of fear the opposite pair is love that is your true nature that is where your comfort lies fear is that aspect that gift that allows us to experience what we are not love allows you to experience who you are. Love begets possibility and with possibility you can take on anything. This is the truth of life but don't believe it. Ponder it. Become aware of it. Be conscious of the meanings and once you realize it, the power of that truth, liberate yourself. And as you feel ready now, open up your eyes and begin to see about you. Embracing the whole of life with its darkness and its life. Bringing forth the connection with your soul to connecting with the whole of the world and the whole of life. Knowing yourself as divine and letting fear fall apart, fall away leave you beautiful i hope this practice is making you feel as it is making me feel i feel expanded awesome trusting myself ready to take on the rest of my day i have plenty of things to do today so this practice is setting the energies perfectly for me and i hope it has done for you too uh, i look forward to seeing you tomorrow for practice as well and please help me spread the world tell the word Tell your people about the class, about this practice, and let's make a big community of online practitioners. If you know of somebody that may be interested in this class, um, please uh, help them get into my Instagram bio, give them my contact so that they can reach out. All the details for the class are in the Instagram, but they can reach out to connect with particular questions if they want, or if you also have questions, please reach out. Thank you so much. Soul siblings, enjoy a glorious day. Namaste. Blessings.